sing along and say that's my song. Mm -hmm. The point of a worship is explaining to God you are grateful for what he does. The point of a worship is to completely surrender yourself and say, I am so thankful that I don't even know what to do myself. I don't even know what to do myself, God. I'm just so thankful. That's a worship. A praise and a worship is two different things. And a lot of people are comfortable with praising, but they're not comfortable with worship. Praise is good, but worship is powerful. Mm. Worship is powerful. Worship is powerful. And it's more than just the words to the song. It's more than just the words to the song. And if you're going to sing a worship song, you better mean every word of it because he don't know the difference. Because the power will be in your voice. God told me one time, in the midst of me doubting my own self, he told me, your praise shakes the atmosphere. Your worship shakes the atmosphere. And you want to always have a praise and a worship like that. Because other than that, you just sing the song. I just want to say For y'all that don't believe Because I was one who didn't believe Who really didn't care to believe I don't try everything in the world Alcohol, drugs Women but when I left all that and just gave God a try, just tried it. I done did everything else. That's when I got my peace and my joy. When I accepted them into my heart. That's when everything became easy. Believe his word. You will never put nothing on you that will hurt you, that you can't handle. That is true. The things that come at me now, I know I got God on my side. They just roll off. And I'm going about my day. And I still have my joy every day. I'm going to say something else. Really, it's not me saying something. It's God something. And it's specifically for people who keep going around saying they're Christian. And let me tell you something. When you say to someone that you're Christian, be aware that you have the powerful, a powerful curse in your hand. And what I say by that is because when you say to someone that you're a Christian and they see you or hear you do or say something outside of that, you have cursed them because mm. now they believe that's what a Christian is. Mm. Mm. Be careful. Be careful when you pass around that term. Because being Christian is more than just going to church and sitting in Sunday and saying, yeah, preach. It's more than that. When you toss around that term and you're not living it fully, you can send out curses and that blood is on your hands. A lot of Christians out there are saying, I give it all to God and I surrender it all. And at the same time, you fighting with him over it. Let me tell you something, God's not going to fight with you over here. When you try to give it to him, you snatch it back. He's going to let you have it back. He's going to let you have it back. I can tell you that much. What I'm trying to say is, be careful what you say out of your mouth because life and death lies in the power of the tongue. And we don't take that as serious as we should. We don't take that as serious as we should. When he says, God, that life and death power in, <coughs> lies in the power of the tongue, that's just what he means. When you speak it, your words speak either life or death. You can't keep going back and forth. You see, because when you say that you're a Christian, that's life. But then when you say you're a Christian, and then right after that you cuss Paul out, that's death. Mm. So what are you associating death with? Christian. Mm. And what is Christian supposed to be? People of God. So now you have associated death with people of God. Mm. All right now. Um, <laughs> back to get back so I can get this on out. Because God, like, say it, say it. Let's get off track. Um, Life and death lies in a power tongue, and you will be held accountable for it. Because let me tell you something. If you, okay, if you rape Paul, and then because you've raped Paul, Paul rapes three other women, not only is that Paul's sins, the rape of those three women are your sin too, mm. because you've raped Paul. Mm. 
that blood is on your hand. And every blood because of your sin that he puts on his hand is on your hand too. Mm. If I curse Trina and Trina curse Vincent, both those sins are on my hand. Mm. Because her sin was a reflection of my sin. Mm. I sent out a curse that sent out a curse that sent out a curse. And all them curses come back to me. When I stand before God, I'm going to be judged for all of those curses. Mm. They call them curse words for a reason, because you realize when you say stuff like that, you are cursing people. Right. You are cursing them. Life and death lies in the power of the tongue. Mm -hmm. Take it serious. What you say to people is not a game. You tell somebody, I hope you die, that's a curse, because if they die the next day, the blood is on your hand. Mm. A lot of people don't want to hear that. A lot of people that don't happen to. They mm. don't wish somebody dead, they died, and now they're like, oh no. You should be saying, oh no, because that blood is on your hand. Because you sent out a curse, and that curse came to pass. Mm. Life and death lies in the power of the tongue, and it's not to be taken lightly. The words of the Bible are not just words. They're truth. Mm. They're stuff that happen every day. A lot of people are reading the Bible and not applying none of that, not listening to that, not listening to that knowledge. Oh, I'm not trying to go there with it. I'm just trying to live my life and just know that God at the head. God can't be at the head if you ain't following His rules. Oh. How you go? Let me say. How you go say that this is God, right? Right? And God at the top. So that means God at the top up here. Everything He say is coming down to you. And because this is the most important person in your life, you gonna want everything He say and everything that He's about to be within you, and you don't want to show it to other people, you don't want to talk about it, you don't want to be excited about it, because he at the top, right? Mm -hmm. So let me show you, every time God at the top up there at the roof, let me show you every time what you do every time you don't follow a rule, or you try to turn the Bible, you just bring them closer, and closer down, bring them down, and sooner or later, all that stuff, the reasons why you put it there, like, I'm going to drink wine, right? And I'm going to make sure that I say it's because it is. So now wine is over God. Mm. Right? And then you're going to say, well, I'm, I'm only clubbing, but I'm not drinking while I'm clubbing. And then up oh, clubbing, it's over God. It's more mm. important. And then like, I smoke my cigarettes, but it's just tobacco. It ain't doing nothing to me. Oh, cigarettes, they over God. Right? Mm. And then I'm going to watch these pornos, but I'm not doing what they're doing. So up, oh, up. Oh, Porno, sex, addiction, that's over God. See, you just keep putting that stuff over the top of him, and you don't realize mm. is that he's no longer the top anymore. Mm. You made more things important to him, because they're more. it's more important for you to be able to keep the tobacco, it's more important for you to be able to keep going out with your friends and doing stuff you ain't got no business doing, than keeping God's word high. Mm. So now he's not the most important thing, so you're lying, which is then another sin. Don't you see, sin begets sin begets sin begets sin. I'm talking too fast, let me slow down. <laughs> Some people don't understand what I mean. Sin begets sin begets sin begets sin. Because they're all tied into the same thing, which is the devil. And they all come back to the same thing. So, you've lied, which is a sin. You've smoked, which is a sin. Mm. You, you've drunk, which is a sin. You've mm. clubbed, which is a sin. Mm. And all these sins are because of one sin that you're trying to convince yourself that God is at the top. Mm. Sin begets sin begets sin begets sin. Okay, so let me show you. you. You're a Christian, right? So, you go to the club. Now you done went to the club, and you know you done went to the club. And then you go back home. Your mom, she know you're supposed to be a Christian. She asks you, where you been? You can't tell her you was at the club, because you're not supposed to be at the club. Here comes the first sin, bam. Oh, I was at the library. You just lied. Mm. Right? Then you go to work, or you go to your Bible study, and they talking about clubbing, right? And they tell, they say to you, why do you take, why do you think about clubbing? You just went clubbing the other night, right? And you lied to your mom about going clubbing the other night, right? And now you're going to tell them, I don't believe in clubbing, that's it. Bam! You just committed another sin. Mm -hmm. You just committed another sin because it don't stop. It don't stop. You just bigotry and lies, it don't stop. You see what I'm saying? You just keep putting yourself in a trap in the trap, in the trap, in the trap, and pretty soon you're not going to be able to get out. You dig a deeper, and a deeper, and a deeper, and a deeper hole for yourself. Mm. A deeper hole 